Okay. Let, let's talk about this guy from California, right? Who is, um, he's loved by the left. He's Bill Maher's favorite. He's somebody that the left would love to actually run for office today instead of Joe Biden, and that's the uh, governor of California. His name is uh, Gavin Newsom, right? Gavin Newsom. Mm -hmm. And Gavin Newsom just came out with a, uh, uh, a campaign video for what Alabama did to put the fear of abortion, which is a topic that's going to be the 2024 topic. Rob, go ahead and play this clip. This is not a parody. I want to make sure you guys know this. Parody for you guys that don't. If you didn't watch the Antonio Brown interview, this is not a parody. This is an actual ad that Newsom just tweeted out. Enjoy this. Oh, my God. We're almost there. You're going to make it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Trump Republicans want to criminalize young Alabama women who travel for reproductive care. Watch this. Miss, I'm going to need you to step out of the vehicle, take a pregnancy test. What the Stop fuck? them by taking action at righttotravel.org. Campaign for Democracy Group is responsible for the content yeah. of this oh. advertising. Again, this is not a parody. Yes. This is fear porn is what it yeah. is, right? But Gavin Newsom is into fear porn is what this is. What do you think about when you see something like this? You know, you, you, you kind of hope that people would have the same reaction that we had in just like, this is so insane and outrageous and outside of the realm of the real world that we see it for what it is, that you automatically assume like, okay, what's the, what's the joke? What's the punchline here? But they do this because they know that there will be people who believe it. Yep. who either believe it's already happening, people who live in the heart of Los Angeles, who've never been to Alabama in their lives, who don't know people who don't think the way that they think, who will fall for this. And this is, this is uh, what, one of the many things that is most concerning about what they're doing. He, what, what was your reaction, by the way, when you saw this? What's your reaction? Yeah. Can, can, can you, like, it's, the first reaction to me was, uh, who sent it to me? David, where's David at? David, send it to me. What did I ask you? I says, this is a Babylon joke. B or and something. you know what he said? He says, I don't know. <laughs> so even he's like, then I go and I look, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. He tweeted this out because what he sent to me wasn't directly from him. It's actually unbelievable, yeah. right? When you see uh, an approach like this, they're taking. However, Trump did come out recently and share his position on abortion Rob, if I'm not mistaken, what was the position he took? He said four he said months? 16 weeks, I want to say. Four months, right? 16 yeah. weeks, right? Whereas DeSantis said six weeks, which is <sighs> insane. A lot of people it, 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 Rob, do you have the clip? Okay, go for it, Rob, if you want to play this. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. It must be remembered that the Democrats are the radical ones on this position because they support abortion up to and even beyond the ninth month. The concept of having an abortion in the later months and even execution after birth, and that's exactly what it is. The baby is born, the baby is executed after birth, is unacceptable, and almost everyone agrees with that. Where do you stand with abortion? Well, I, I think the, just the, the latest thing that Trump talked about was that by getting rid of Roe v. Wade, you send it to the states. You send it, send it to the states to decide uh, which is the appropriate action uh, that I think should have been taken. Um, you know, the, the politicization of this issue is really the problem. And I think even uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg talked about this before she passed away, is that Supreme Court justices should were very often being selected based on where they stood on this issue, uh, when, when they should not be used as political pawns, that Supreme Court should not be politicized. And so I supported that position uh, and that change that was made. This, this you know, go, going back to that ad that Gavin Newsom uh, has put out, there's a reason why they're doing this. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not because that is a very real threat of actually happening. It's because they're trying to distract voters away from the wide open borders that we have with people. I was in, I was in uh, San Diego recently going and spent two days at the border 
went to various points along the wall, saw the different holes in the wall, talked to illegal immigrants, hundreds and hundreds of them over those two days, 48 hours that I was there at the border, who were running this through like clockwork, walking through, flying into Tijuana from countries all over the world. I talked to them and asked them, where did you come from? How did you get here? Well, I came here from, uh, from uh, Egypt. I came here from Colombia. I came here from Turkmenistan. I came here from all these different countries. You fly into Tijuana, you walk across the border, you know exactly where to go for Border Patrol to pick you up. They pick you up, they take you in, they process you. Within 24 hours, you have a paid ticket to go anywhere in the country. They want to take, they want to distract away from the very real issues that most voters are concerned about. The economy, it's the border, it's education, it's crime in our streets. And so they use these as fear mongering tools to try to divide us and try to make people afraid uh, of something that frankly isn't real. I think that's, that's the most concerning thing that everyone needs to keep their eyes open about as they see, because this is just going to be the first of, of many different things that comes up around this national election that will be taking place. They don't want us to see the truth about what they're doing. Some Democratic strategists may say, uh, Tulsi, I think this is a very important issue because if you look at the red wave yep. that uh, uh, Kevin uh, McCarthy was expecting, and he would have still been the Speaker of the House, that ended up not being the case because a couple weeks prior to that is when they pushed Roe v. Wade and, you know, 6-3 or whatever the number was, Supreme Court, and it was gone. And the timing of it, some blame Mitch McConnell because Mitch McConnell did not want a majority because he wanted to be a little bit closer uh, uh, with the red wave not coming. So then that happens. They barely win. Then there's a fight. You Marjorie Green Taylor, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Matt Gates, and all this stuff that's going on. And then... McCarthy's out, now the new guy's in. So meaning, the, the Democrats may say, I don't know. I think abortion is a big topic for 2024, and it is something that we have to touch on. Do you think uh, Trump's handling of this topic is going to be in a way where it's going to be a non-issue, or do you think they're still going to find a way to pin Roe v. Wade being gone on Trump? I don't know exactly how this is going to play out, but again, I don't have any doubt that they will try to weaponize and politicize this issue to fear monger uh, in order to make it so Joe Biden will not have to be held to account for his record. They're terrified of his record, so they'll look for any excuse to try to distract voters away from it because on, on whether you're looking at domestic policy or you're looking at foreign policy, when you take the emotions out of the equation and you look at Donald Trump next to Joe Biden, and again, and you've talked about this before on your show, these are, these are not unknown quantities for the first time in a really long time. You, we know exactly who these people are, and they both have records that can be shown side by side. They're terrified that voters will actually see that, and so they will, they will absolutely try to use this. Whether or not it works, We'll see. But again, this is why it's so important for truth tellers to be out there. Every one of us, not just people who have podcasts, but every one of us in our own sphere of influence, making sure that we are letting people know what's actually going on in the country, not allow ourselves to be manipulated, which is exactly what this is. For everyone out there that's watching, everyone out there that's watching, Tulsi is officially on Manect. Rob, if you can show her Manect, the first 50 people that Manect with Tulsi, we will send you a copy of the book is well signed. We bought copies to get it out there because we are so confident in her message being out there. We feel more people need to hear from her. So the first 50 that connect with Tulsi, ask her whatever questions you got. And those 50 names we'll get. We're going to send you a copy. Just make sure you're in America. If you're anywhere else outside of America, we're not shipping to you. If you're not in America, don't do the Manect. Only in America will ship the copy to your first 50 states. Thank you for that. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.